since 2015, I've lived in at least 11 different cities across seven countries. With the objective of keeping my total cost of living low while still enjoying a high quality of life. Geographical arbitrage is a way to experience a similar quality of life at a fraction of the cost by taking advantage of the difference in prices between various locations. Singapore to California, I didn't have much things to begin with, but once I settled here, I started to buy stuff the normal people do. A TV, dining table and chairs, queen size bed. This is my bedroom. And then I moved, and this is when I realized that I can get rid of more stuff. Is the uh, walk-in closet such that I was able to put everything that I own inside my compact size car. Basically I have jackets, long sleeve shirts. There is more than one reason why I decided to sell my condo. One consideration was the total cost of ownership. When I owned the condo, although I did not have any mortgage payments, I still had HOA or Homeowners Association fees every month, property taxes twice a year, and insurance. I figured that I should be able to find places in other parts of the world where my accommodation cost will be no more than my HOA fees, which was $300 a month then. In many ways, my life is simpler now than when I owned a house. Before, I was able to fit everything I owned in my compact size car. Being a nomad, I don't have that luxury anymore. I don't have a car, so everything I own has to fit into my carry-on luggage. I only have one pair of footwear. It certainly makes this sort of lifestyle easier when you can carry all that you own. Most of the time I'm staying in tiny homes, meaning that the rooms are about 300 square feet. I usually have my own private bathroom, but the kitchen is shared. When I began on this journey five years ago, my focus was only to live in places of eternal spring. These are places that are supposed to have spring-like weather throughout the year. There were two main reasons why I preferred places of eternal spring. One, I prefer mild weather and do not like to depend on an AC or a heater. 
Two, these places, because of the weather, tend to be the bread basket for the region, and hence you can get fresh fruits and vegetables throughout the year. Aquí le ofrecemos productos orgánicos, nada de químicos ni fertilizantes. The biggest challenge of this type of living, at least for me, has been finding suitable accommodation each time you move. And by that I mean an accommodation that meets your livability criteria while at the same time meeting your cost criteria. The moving itself is not hard because I travel light and I usually stay in a place as long as I legally can. Other than Vietnam, I've not had the need to apply for any visa for all the countries I've lived so far. Since I'm staying only as long as a tourist can legally stay, which is mostly three months, but in Mexico it is six months. The good thing about Mexico is I don't have to do a border run or a visa run once my six months is up. I pay a lawyer about $200 and she gets my stay extended. In Vietnam, although a visa or a pre-approval for a visa on arrival to enter Vietnam is needed, it is a fairly simple process and depending on the visa you're applying you can even stay up to a year which is what I did During my travels, I've come across hotels or restaurants that have a piano or a guitar. And this has enabled me to keep learning to play these instruments. In the absence of that, there are apps that allow you to practice these instruments on your laptop. Technology, besides helping to keep the cost down, is a huge aid in simplifying life. For the most part, my typical day is location independent. No matter where I am, I spend time in my spiritual practice. Engage in some physical activity. Read reflect and write. I try to focus on one task at any one time instead of multitasking. I also do not engage in activities just to keep myself busy. Sometimes doing nothing is beneficial. The Italians will call it 
la dolce far niente, or the sweetness of doing nothing. And that can be hard because we are action buyers. I also cook my own meals. My food cost has been less than $200 a month. So far my accommodation cost has been about $300 a month and that includes utilities and internet. The model of low ownership. That's what I'm trying to do. I don't have any pot, pan or any kitchen utensils and yet I cook most of my own meals. The beauty about living a simple life with few possessions is that you don't have the headache of repair and maintenance that comes with ownership. And you can only lose what you have. For the last five years, I've been traveling with just one pair of footwear. And after many years, the sole was worn out. Vamos a, hoy vamos a reemplazar Replazarle la suela, cambiarle la suela. Ajá. La suela. It has been two years since I last replaced the sole of my Crocs. It has worn off. So it was time to attempt Kinsukuroi. There's a Japanese art of repairing broken pottery called Kintsukuroi, or golden repair. Mm. <laughs> as a philosophy, it treats repair as part of the history of the product, rather than something to disguise. And is capable of turning broken objects into something more beautiful than the original. Irrespective of where I am, my interactions with the locals and fellow travelers have always been good. Okay. So, sí. este es... Uh, sí, soy. ese es el, lo primero, es, es eso. Ah, ok. Aquí. I did not learn Spanish in high school. I learned Spanish on my own. And living in Spanish-speaking countries certainly helped. ¿A dónde usted uh, aprende? Um, una, una persona me... Me enseña. Okay. Un americano. So, Esto es 10 minutos. 10 minutos. De... Bajito. Bajito, no es, no es sí, I do not know how long I will continue living this way. At this point, I am content with this way of life. I do not know if and when I may become tired of it. Geographical arbitrage and places of eternal spring have been my primary considerations thus far, but that may change in the future. I do not know. What matters 
is the ability to pivot as and when conditions change. There has been at least one thing that I have liked in each of the places that I've lived, such that if for some reason I was to be stuck in any one of these places indefinitely, let's say due to a pandemic, it won't be that bad. At the same time, there is no compelling reason for me to decidedly settle down permanently in any one place. One thing that is on the back of my mind is climate change, which I think people may be underestimating. looked at various living options or arrangements and so far my current mode of living works well for me. There's no initial capital outlay or ongoing maintenance cost. My total cost of living, even after taking into account any travel cost, is less now than when I owned my house free and clear. I do not see any downside to this. Thanks to technology, we can easily keep in touch with anyone from anywhere in the world. So, for now, I enjoy the present. When conditions change and if I have to move, I'll move. After all, modern humans lived as nomads for 99% of our history.